up front. TikTok has been taking down or muting a lot of our videos within minutes of them being posted. If you're seeing this video and it's muted, you can also find it on our YouTube and Facebook. Time for three minutes hate or 23 minutes. Who the fuck knows? My rants usually end up being like half an hour and then I cut them down to 10, 12 minutes. Who knows? What's up, Fam of Liberty and everyone else watching this video who isn't following our channel for some fucking reason? It's your new best friend, Big Sarge, or the artist formerly known as Admin Tim, founder of the Sons of Liberty. If you're new to our channel, then let me go ahead and get this out of the way. Fuck Donald Trump. Fuck Elon Musk. Fuck MAGA traders. This ain't no safe space for bootlicking simps for a wish.com fascist oligarch wannabe authoritarian. Now that you know where I stand on things, maybe consider following the channel after you watch this video. I'd like to thank everybody who came out to last night's live stream, who sat through it all, uh, whether it was Admin Jin talking about being married to a MAGA spouse and what she was going to do about it, to what ended up being Admin Matt and I at the very end talking about Star Citizen, because those were the questions that we were being asked. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and I'm sure quite a few of you may be sitting down at a table with MAGA relatives, whether because you've got no real choice or because you're deliberately going to stoke the fires. I want every one of y'all to make it goddamn uncomfortable for these motherfuckers. Protesting isn't just crowding a street or standing on a sidewalk. The point of a protest is to make shit uncomfortable, inconvenient, and unignorable. Be the good kind of trouble. Be obnoxious, be brave, be informed, and be fucking angry. Some of y'all leave comments on our content saying, Oh, Big Sarge, you're the voice of my anger. No, cut that shit out. You are the voice of your anger. I'm just a guy with a platform who learned how to artfully yell stuff. Maybe I'm saying things that you already think but are afraid to say. We've got less than two months before Trump fucks this country over again. Nobody is coming to save you. Not Kamala Harris, not AOC, not the Democratic Party, not the Supreme Court, not a recount, not the media. Nobody can save you but you. On that note, Sons of Liberty, or the Fam of Liberty for y'all, people thinking that this is a club for men, it's not. It's really not, and I don't know how you made it through elementary school. The Fam of Liberty is joining and coordinating regional protests up to and including joining the protest in Washington, D.C. on 18 January. Again, as stated plenty of times before, this is an OPSEC issue, and the first rule of OPSEC Fight Club is we don't talk about OPSEC Fight Club in public spaces. I know some of you are technologically challenged and can't or haven't figured out Discord, despite the fact that I have a whole instructional video on it, but get on our Discord. Coordination starts there. Some of y'all MAGA motherfuckers that are still watching my channel like good little subs into getting cucked don't know what a fucking tariff is, and neither does the Cheeto Jesus you voted for. Want to know how I know Pumpkin Spice Palpatine doesn't know about tariffs? Because Velveeta Voldemort went on live national TV and did an interview talking about tariffs like Santa Claus was weapons-grade stupidity. First and foremost, the Sons of Liberty admin team has at least one trained, educated, learned economist with a business degree on staff. All you Google Foo experts wearing MAGA hats say, do your own research on the internet and Anytime something rustles your jimmies and shits all over your worldview, sit the fuck down. Shut the fuck up. Know your fucking role. And since you're accustomed to swallowing huge loads, here's one straight from the cock of liberty, you nasty motherfuckers. Tariffs can be good when you have, say, a golden age of American industry when economic performance is good. But we're in late stage crony capitalism and we've outsourced so much to foreign countries that placing tariffs on, say, China and Mexico and Canada would be fucking stupid. Remember hearing about the Great Depression? In 1921, Republicans retook Congress and imposed what's called a protective tariff. They raised this tariff even higher in 1930 to try and combat the Great Depression, but other countries retaliated and the Great Depression got even greater depressier. And by greater, I mean people jumping out of windows and shit. So clearly Republicans don't know what the fuck they're doing and they still haven't figured this shit out after 100 years. So... As further proof of this, in 2017, Donald Trump proposed to use protective tariffs as a weapon to restore greatness to the economy. You probably remember how that went. The outstanding economy he inherited from President Obama went to utter shit, and we had to bail out the agricultural industry to the tune of some $61 billion. And by the way, none of those farmers can get white people to work for them because the only people who pick fruit and vegetables in the hot-ass sun for less than minimum wage are undocumented workers who put almost $100 million per year into the economy, and who Trump plans to round up at the cost of almost twice that. And also, oh by the way, again, the only people who got bailouts were big agriculture. 
giant corporations whose CEOs get billion dollar parachutes. That's why so many little farmer guys voted for Biden in 2020, because Trump forgot about them. Guess y'all little farmer bros forgot all that shit this time around, huh? Here's how a tariff works in a capitalist country. We force countries to pay a higher price to send goods here. Those countries retaliate by putting tariffs on our goods. We don't win anything. And then the companies importing these higher price goods will pass those costs on to the customers. That's you making prices higher. So you thought prices were high before? It's about to get a whole lot worse. And I hope y'all motherfuckers know how to build guillotines out of random shit because most of our lumber comes from Canada now. Avin V has a business degree and is old enough to remember learning something about how the free market economy was good for business. She learned a shit ton about economics and pricing models and net versus gross profits. And she'd like you all to know that she's got forgotten most of it. But she does remember that a tariff adds to the cost of producing a product. The cost of producing the product is then factored into the price that is set by the manufacturer. Some of y'all be looking at this video being like, huh, what do you say? And that's probably part of the fucking problem if you voted for Trump or protest voted against Kamala Harris. I still remember you motherfuckers. Now, I don't mean to talk down to anybody, but this is so fucking simple that even the dumbest of dumb fucks should understand. A tariff is something that is paid by the importing company not the country that it is imported from. This means that we, the consumers, will be paying the tariffs. You and me, we're the fucking consumers. Now, a lot of people say that, oh, well, we'll just start doing stuff here again. Motherfucker, you don't know how shit works. Like, did you pay any goddamn attention in any school at all? You don't just grow fruit trees overnight. You don't just grow fruit any day of the year after a fucking week. In 2022, 54.8% of fresh fruit in the U.S. was imported. That's an increase of almost 20% since 2000. We also import about 15% of our overall food supply. Most of it comes from Mexico and Canada, but we do dumb shit like send food to China for them to process it back and send it back to us. Guess who's getting Trump tariffs? China, Mexico, and Canada. In 2022, Mexico supplied 51% of fresh fruit and 69% of fresh vegetables. The time for tariffs was in the 1980s and 1990s when manufacturing was leaving the United States for China and Mexico. When the town that Admin V and I grew up in lost a textile mill, it was bad. And it was bad all over the South, and we had to adapt to a service economy. And now the kids that would have grown up to go into those mill jobs have instead become home builders, IT people, nurses, call center operators, and countless other jobs that pay well. The manufacturing industry that exists now in places where we grew up relies on cheap goods from Canada, China, and Mexico. Hmm, where have I heard those names before? The economy is different now than it was when Donald J. Trump and his boomer cohorts were coming up. And before y'all boomers get up in my comments with the hashtag not all boomers, let me please remind you, sirs, ma'ams, and envy thems, that your boy Big Sarge is a fan of Tony, Tony, Tony. If the shoe fits, I want you to wear it and wear it good. da 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 day da 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 day Hey. I know, we're talking about the other crowd. Anyway, this tariff bullshit is fucking stupid, and every economist who has ever economisted agrees. Even noted conservative, capitalist stooge Ben Stein knows this. We learn this shit in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. The only people who don't are the people who were lost in the 1950s and 60s when the U.S. was the only major economy left standing after World War II, and the bootlicking moronic masses that believe whatever Trump tells them to believe. Bottom line, tariffs are a 20th century solution to a 21st century problem. This is just one more thing to add to the catalog of we told you so's that are in the works. How bad does it have to get before it's a universally believed truth that electing Trump was a stupid fucking idea? Hopefully before the midterm elections in 2026 and we can turn around some of this upcoming bullshit. That's if we still have a fucking democracy and a republic left. I know I seem like I'm yelling at voters, so the Democrats also need to get their heads out of their asses and create a coherent platform that isn't just based on, look how much Trump sucks, and a move to the center to appeal to the perceived middle. The middle is morons. They've shown us that if you can't see the difference between Trump and any other human being, then God help you. Come up with an actual solid platform and stick to it, Democrats. God damn. And all you motherfuckers in the media who might be watching my video, guess what? Your whole industry is shit. You're all fucking stooges for crony capitalist oligarchs, hell-bent on squeezing every penny out of entertaining people with bread and circus bullshit as you milk Donald Trump for all he's worth. And I mean that not as a compliment. You fuckers are absolutely complicit in this 2024 election. And I get that it's ravings driven and profit driven, especially as you struggle to stay relevant in an age of digital media, but you're a fucking accomplice. And I hope all your media empires crumble because of it. Go line up over there with the MAGA traders, accomplice. My advice to you, fam of liberty, is to look at all the products in your house and anything that you anticipate needing in the next six months, 
Go stock up on that shit now. Because anything coming from China, anything coming from Canada, and anything coming from Mexico are about to get real pricey real fast. Just as an example, MAC Cosmetics come from Canada, and so does Lumber for all you conservative blue-collar construction contractor fellas that voted red because... That's what your pappy and his pappy afore him told you to do because Jesus got guns in the Republican Party. Woo! And for all you people out there watching who are fucking tired of the bullshit, you can make a guillotine out of quite a bit of alternative materials. Or you can just start ripping up the houses of oligarchs and making it out of that wreckage. MAGA thought it was appropriate to erect a gallows outside the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. I think it's appropriate to build guillotines and leave them in public spaces like town squares, in front of politicians' offices, you know, like art installations, tax write-offs, like Banksy graffiti, but with an edge of American rebellion tinged with French accents. That's my time for today. Obligatory disclaimers. The resistance starts with us. To that end, we've begun organizing local Sons of Liberty chapters by region. We're doing all of this on the Sons of Liberty Discord server because social media fuck faces like Mark Fuckerbird and Apartheid Andy can't be platformers there or mute or censor our content. Discord started out as a program for gamers, but it's evolved to beyond that, so you don't need to be a gamer. You can shoot the shit with the admins and the other fam of liberty. You can fight with other angry liberals as long as it takes me to ban you. Learn about self-defense and home defense and arming yourself. Get updates from our social media, which, by the way, we have restructured now so that you don't get pinged all to hell. You can opt out of that shit. So get on the Discord server and go look at the new channel to opt out if you're tired of getting pinged every time we post on social media. The invite link to Discord is in the throat punch at the end of this video. It's also in the YouTube video description and in the TikTok and YouTube channel descriptions. I also have a how-to video for Discord. If you like the shirts or the hoodie that I wear in my videos, some of them, but not all of them, are available in the Sons of Liberty merch store, which is listed in the link tree on our TikTok and YouTube channel description. On YouTube, it's also in the video description. If you like our video content, I would appreciate very much if you'd follow us on all of the other socials that we have, whichever ones that you've got. That includes Blue Sky, OnlyFans, Instagram, Facebook, I might even go make a fucking truth social just to piss off more conservatives because I love their tears. Y'all see my snowflake glass last night? That's for collecting MAGA tears. On YouTube and TikTok, we'd also appreciate it if you'd subscribe, like, and get notifications on our channel. A little bit of a different process on TikTok, but if you're on TikTok, you already know that. You can help us extend our reach by sharing our video content on all of your socials. You can help us beat the algorithm by leaving us at least seven words in the comments. Why seven words? Because it's a Deftone song reference, it's a George Carlin reference, and also it's the magic number for the algorithm to decide that your engagement on our content is meaningful and that it should suggest our videos and our channel to people who watch the same things that you watch. By the way, this also works on every other social media platform, so be cognizant of that on other places where you support your favorite content creators, like us. On that note, if you watched this video all the way to the end, the phrase, I made it to the end, big stars, is actually eight words. So if you can't think of anything else to say or you're an overachiever, there's a suggestion. Two claps and a rick. I will never forgive the traders who sold us out. Woo! Oh, and guess what time it is now? And now it's time for the throw punch! <laughs> that we do on discord is we organize resistance cells for people who maybe certain assigned female at birth vagina owners might need to not be in a state that has outlawed certain procedures maybe you just want to go camping and you've got an uncle or an auntie in an adjacent state that has wonderful blue lakes and Blue forests and blue laws, well, not actual blue laws, because those like keep you from drinking on Sundays, but you get the picture, right? Anyway, aunties and uncles that will take you camping or help out your undocumented worker friends if they start rounding people up, which they are going to fucking do. I'm just saying, Discord's a wonderful tool and so is resistance. Resist with the fist of an angry god. You are that angry God. And all you people that are like, Sarge, you're sacrilegious. Yes, I am. 
really appreciate all of you who tuned into the Sons of Liberty live stream last night. Uh, those of you who were on long enough probably caught a glimpse of my wife's arse as she walked past the camera butt-ass naked. That's going in the outtake. Sorry, I can't say that. <laughs> I mean, I did say it, but 